Welcome to Screen Recaps, and today we are going to recapping the first three episodes of The Extant. Astronaut Molly Woods returns home from a 13-month solo mission aboard the space station Sarah Fem, struggling to readjust to Earth's atmosphere. Her son Ethan is worried, but her husband John reassures him. At a welcome home party, Molly declines a drink, citing her doctor's advice to wait for test results. That night, she sees a shadowy figure outside, which disappears when she looks away. Meanwhile, John replaces a battery in Ethan's back, revealing Ethan is an AI android created by John. The next day, Molly visits her physician friend Sam at the International Space Exploration Agency, ICA, for a health assessment. Sam reveals shocking news. Molly is pregnant. Confused, Molly, who is infertile, wonders how this is possible after a solo mission. Sam asks if she was truly alone on the spaceship, prompting a flashback. In space, Molly experienced a power outage during a video call with her family. Investigating, she saw her deceased ex-boyfriend Marcus through a porthole, writing, Help me. Back in the present, Molly asks Sam to keep her pregnancy a secret while she figures things out. Later, Molly is questioned by ICEA director Alan Sparks about several hours of missing video footage from the space station. She insists it was accidentally deleted. Meanwhile, John presents his Humanics project to the Yasu Moto Corporation, showcasing Ethan, an AI android designed to experience human emotions. When asked about an emergency termination plan, John is offended, and the board denies funding. Alan expresses his suspicions about Molly to Hideki Yasu Moto, Molly's employer. Hideki instructs him to monitor her closely and overrides his board to grant John the necessary funding. Later, Molly receives a mysterious note in the park. I know what happened to you. While searching for the sender, Ethan refuses to follow and storms off into the woods, where Molly finds him standing over a dead pigeon. Concerned about Ethan's behavior, Molly discusses it with John, who dismisses her worries as part of Ethan's development. Alone in her room, Molly recalls the spaceship incident. Her deceased ex-boyfriend Marcus appeared and, defying gravity, entered the ship as she floated in zero gravity. Marcus approaches Molly and gently touches her, rendering her unconscious. When she wakes, she checks the CCTV footage, but finds no sign of Marcus, prompting her to delete the footage. In the present, Molly sees Harmon Krieger, a fellow astronaut believed dead, who claims to know what happened during her mission. Before they can talk, John calls her, and Harmon leaves, promising to return later. The next morning, Molly prepares breakfast while John heads to his new workplace, excited about his state-of-the-art lab. At home, Molly experiences a sudden abdominal pain and collapses, alarming Ethan. Later, they visit a museum where Sam approaches Molly, revealing Alan's pressure for her health report. Molly shares her encounter with Harmon and learns he had brain abnormalities, possibly a neurovirus. Molly requests an off-the-radar ultrasound to confirm her pregnancy, as she trusts no one. Sam agrees. Meanwhile, Ethan converses with an information robot about human evolution, hinting at his curiosity and advanced AI programming. Ethan learns about natural selection and extinction from a robot before Molly takes him away. Unaware, Harmon has been watching. Harmon recalls his space experience, where he saw his deceased mother during a power cut. Molly drops Ethan at John's lab to meet Hideki, then secretly accesses ICEA footage, seeing Harmon barricading a door. Forced to flee, she meets Harmon, who recounts his experience. His mother's apparition pursued him until he trapped her in the airlock and released her into space. Isia dismissed his story as schizophrenia. Molly relates and agrees they need evidence. Sam takes her to a vet for an ultrasound, revealing a healthy 14-week-old fetus. Meanwhile, John waits for Molly at a lunch date she forgets. That evening, Molly confronts Alan about her pregnancy demanding answers, but he remains silent. Alan informs Hideki, who ominously suggests, I think they're already here. Molly returns home and apologizes to John for missing their date. John notices something is amiss, but offers Molly time and support. The next morning, Alan waits outside their home, urging Molly to visit a contained ICEA area for testing. He reveals her pregnancy resulted from a covert agency experiment using her and John's genetic material. Shocked, Molly refuses to be quarantined. Meanwhile, 
Ethan prepares for his first day of elementary school. John and Molly drop him off. Despite other parents' concerns about their children being around a robot, the couple convinces them that Ethan poses no threat. Later, Molly visits Harmon's trailer but finds it empty, noticing a strange symbol shaped like an Apollonian gasket. That evening, John throws a birthday party for Molly. Among the guests is Marcus's brother, Tim, with whom Molly shares a private conversation. Sam arrives to take a blood sample from Molly for a DNA test. During the party, the power goes out. In his study, John finds a captured bird, and Ethan admits to the act. Upset, John forbids such activities. Ethan retorts that Molly has secrets too. Finally, in their room, Molly confesses to John that the ICEA experimented on her, resulting in her pregnancy. The revelation leaves John in shock, but he assures Molly he'll support her in uncovering the truth. For now, they decide to enjoy the party. Molly is touched by a special video message from John and Ethan. As the party winds down, Molly searches for Tim, calling out his name. John claims Tim isn't there, and when Molly checks a group photo taken earlier, she realizes she was hallucinating. This incident makes her question her sanity, so she decides to quarantine herself and calls Alan. Alan arrives to pick her up, and they drive off. Meanwhile, Sam heads to her lab for the DNA test, but is blocked by security, claiming a chemical leak. Sensing something amiss, she sneaks inside through another hallway and sees the ICEA team moving her equipment. Realizing they're up to something, Sam calls Molly but learns she's en route to ICEA with Alan. Sam hurriedly texts Molly to get out of Alan's car. Sensing danger, Molly jumps out and starts running, luckily finding John who had been tailing her out of concern. In the final scene, Alan and an ICEA assault team break into Molly's home only to find it empty. I thought I was dead.